submitted for the approval of my viewers. I call this story The Tale of the Book Hall. Welcome fellow freaks, geeks, and nostalgic 90s nerds to my channel, Slime and Slashers, where, you might have guessed it, we talk about everything from Nickelodeon slime to horror movie slashers and all kinds of stuff in between, too. So today's video, though, is more on the horror side. I'm going to be doing another vintage horror book haul. It's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> and I'm obviously addicted to buying, so there'll be no shortage of book hauls on the channel. But let's get to this one before I jump the gun and like talk about, you know, future ones. Let's just get through this one today. So I'll see you right back here, right after this intro. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back. Are you ready to get into the haul? I know I am. Book haul. There ain't no book haul like a vintage book haul. <laughs> Okay, um, if you guys don't know 90s stuff, that was like an S Club 7 spoof. It was a really corny old school TV show and band from the, from the 90s. So I had to throw some 90s in here because today is mostly all about horror. And specifically, as I said in the intro, vintage old school horror. Things that you might call paperbacks from hell, if you guys are fans of Grady Hendrix and Will Erickson's book. That's really the thing that brought this whole old school paperback phenomenon into my realm of knowledge. I didn't know about it before, and I gotta say, so by no means am I an expert. If you guys want expert opinions on old school horror, maybe check out, you know, Cameron Chaney's channel. He's super informative. Or even though he hasn't released a video recently, Leon, Paperback Mania channel. I'll link both in the YouTube depths of hell down there below in the description. But yeah, if you guys want expert opinions and expert knowledge and dates and all kinds of things about publishers and editions, then check out their channels because I think they're really knowledgeable. I'm really just kind of discovering this whole thing. So this is more of my journey into book collecting and I'm a really new book lover. I've read throughout my life, but not much. So I just want to preface my whole book haul with that. And I appreciate you guys checking it out, even if I'm not like an expert or whatever. I really appreciate you giving me your time, because I know it's valuable and special. So let's get into the books. I've got a whole bunch here, freaking over 40 books, and I've got some books that I just received in the mail that I'll show you at the very end. I'm going to save the very best gem, the most hidden gem for the very end of the book haul. So stay tuned to the end. And if you do, you'll see something that I was really excited to find in a bookstore like, actually physically there, so that was kind of neat. All right, so the first one we have I think is kind of fun, Waltz with Evil. Look at this amazing cover. Come on. This kid's pretty darn scared there. Look at this kid. Oh, don't, don't take me. Don't waltz with me. I don't know if he'd rather waltz with this lady or salsa with the devil, but whatever. Stupid joke. This is by Zebra, and as you can see, the spine's pretty rough. That's okay with me. Here's the back. I still really like it. So this is by P.D. Rozzi, and I believe it was, I've got my little notes over here, it was released in 1991. So a 90s horror. So next we have Death Coach, which is actually part of a four book series, and it's called Lamaya Zacharias. So this is number one of that Lamaya Zacharias series, and that is the name of the vampire who is like one of, I guess, the main character of this series of books. And each book has the word death in it. So this one's Death Coach, and then there's three others, as I said. There is Death Angel, Death School, and Death Doctor. And this is by J.N. Williamson. And yeah, I've heard a lot of people cr be critical of J.N. Williamson's writing, but one thing's for sure. J.N. Williamson has some amazing paperback cover art on his books. I have a lot of his books. I think I have at least six or seven. I'd like to keep getting more. There's a whole bunch of great ones. And I only have one in the Death series, so the Death Coach is the only one I have. Look at that coach. It's all fancy. Now, we'll see. So this cover is signed by Gerber, G-E-R-B-E-R, -E and I have one other book that is signed by Gerber, and it's a, it's not credited, he's not credit he or she's not credited on the inside. I tried to find the first name, but there might be more than one Gerber out there, but this one is signed, and it is signed right here. Looming just above the carriage silhouetted by the moon, 
was the vampire, Lamaya Zacharias, older than time, reeking of evil. Tonight, she took on the form of a bird, spreading her wings wide to help shadow the driver's hideous face. She accompanied him on his midnight journey, thirsty for the taste of fresh human blood, seeking out the next innocent victim to be taken by the death coach. So I'm guessing this is the hideous driver, not the vampire. Not Zacharias. So... And it's a female vampire, according to the description that I read. The Whipping Boy, and I had never seen this anywhere, but of course after I found it in the used bookstore, and it is super rough, as you can see, it's got tape on the cover, it's just very loose, and look at this awesome inner artwork, it's fallen apart, I know. I'm gonna have to do something about this, but look at that, it almost looks like a... a dissolving Joker, I would say, you know, Batman Joker. Because obviously this guy has makeup on, eye makeup, and looks like lipstick, and it looks like it's kind of melting away. This is pretty neat, and it, it doesn't seem like a pure horror novel, even though the blurb on the back does mention demons, but I think it's more metaphorical demons. Timmy Lowell is possessed by demons. His parents' demons. So it's kind of like child abuse, like very weird stuff going on. I had not seen it anywhere, as I said, when I picked this up. But since I bought it, I actually saw Leon who I mentioned in the beginning, Paperback Mania, I saw him mentioning it and showing it on one of his book haul videos. So I was like, I'm not the only one who thought this cover was intriguing, even though it wasn't even really screaming out horror to me. It just seemed kind of creepy and weird, and I wanted to pick it up because of the cover. Gave me those type of vibes. This was published by Jove. And again, it's listed as fiction, not even, you know, horror is not even listed on the spine like a lot of these books do put horror on the spine. As you can see, this kid's pretty... Pretty innocent looking, but he's got red eyes, so that must mean he's evil, right? I think the nun holding him's a lot creepier than the baby. So she has no face, it's just black there. Beware the Child by Ruth Foster. The baby nobody wanted, now he's back to take his revenge. Maybe a adoption story, like someone gave up the baby, or maybe it's an abortion story. But either way, no one wanted this kid, and now he's freaking pissed. So he's gonna get his revenge. Alright, and this one is another non-horror title, but I picked it up for the cover alone. It is Murder at the Met by David Black. It's actually a non-fiction book. It's based on a true story, so I'd say it's true crime related. Look at that creepy theater mask with the bloody rose in its mouth. To me, that has horror vibes, although this is nonfiction. And it does deal with murder, so I got it. I just think it'll look great on my shelf. I've got a few shelves that I can actually display the covers and not just the spines. So I'm going to use that shelf to display the cover of this one because I think it's kind of neat. And I haven't seen anyone talk about it, probably because it is nonfiction and not like a horror fiction story. But still, I said, whatevs, I'm going to pick it up anyway. And I did. So most of these books are from my local bookstore, which I go to quite often. I get a lot of good deals at the bookstore. Nothing's really above $5 ever. And the good thing about that is you don't have to pay shipping, etc., etc. If you're a book lover and a book collector, you know what I'm talking about. I'm preaching to the choir here. But I do kind of give in and purchase some online stuff. If I see something I really like, if it's in good condition, even if it's like a little bit more expensive than I would like, sometimes I'll splurge and get it. Or if it's a good deal and I just love the cover, I'll get it. But I try to, you know, do in store, but this is a particular one I'm about to show that I got online. I can't remember if it was Etsy or eBay or whatever, but this is Tangerine by Linda Crockett Gray. Let's take a look at the cover here. This one's actually in great condition. A lot of the ones I get from the bookstore have tons of spine creases. So this one is a little different for me in that it, it looks better. I'm not going to read this one just because I, I've heard the story is not that great. But I just couldn't pass up this cover. I love anything bloody on a cover. Whether that be an instrument like you see here, this is a bloody piano. But I also have a great copy of The Count of Eleven by Ramsey Campbell, which is bloody envelopes. And I just... I also want a J.N. Williamson book, which has, like, a bloody chart graph, like a stock chart, and it's, like, this whole uh, line graph, and it's all dripping with blood. I want that one, too. So, I don't know. I guess I'm a sucker for that type of thing. It seems to me I'm a sucker for a lot of things because I'm just buying left and right. I'm like, I love this cover because of this reason. I love that cover because of that reason. Whatevs. Here is She Devil by Lois Horowitz. So obviously it's in rough shape. It is what it is. I'll take what I can get. I'm growing my collection. We do have embossed words for the title here. Nice looking text. 
she came from hell to a town called Happiness. Oh, how ironic. <laughs> Whatever. Happiness is something like hell. A serene, uncharted oasis tucked in the middle of Southern California's cluttered urban sprawl seems too good to be true. But Happiness California is just that. Or is it? And here we have Descendants by Gene Simon. And this was published by Pageant Books in 1989. The cover art is actually attributed. They don't always attribute who did the cover art. But in this case, we know who it is. It's it's attributed to Gabriella, has no last name. This is a great copy, good condition, and I found this at the bookstore, so I was pleased with this. Here's a closer up look of it. And the funny thing is, the author bio in the book says that Jean Simon likes to read tarot cards in her spare time. So I thought that was fun that they listed that. I'll tell you which ones I'm planning to read. I'm not gonna read Brainwatch that you see here in front of you, but I just love the cover, the skeleton typing on an old school looking computer. Lovely. All right, this one's super beat up, The Trident, published by Zebra. And yeah, look at that spine, I know. I don't mind, as I said. Even though I'm not going to read this, so it's not really necessarily a reading copy, I'm still okay with it. This is Little Brothers by Rick Hatula, and although I have this in my not going to read pile, I don't know, I think the back sounds kind of fun, actually. So here's what the back says. It has been five years since Kip Howard saw his mother killed horribly by a blur of little brown things. Five years of nightmares and a terror of dark places. Five years of struggling to overcome what must have been just his imagination. But the... That's probably completely wrong. I can't even pronounce it. The Indian word for little brothers are no one's imagination. Hideous forest creatures who feed every five years on human flesh. The little brothers are about to emerge from the underground once again. Only this time, there will be no escape for the young boy who witnessed their last feast. Before we move on... So the word spelled, I, I didn't even like sound it outright because I just kind of glossed over it. U-N-T-C-I-G-A-H-U-M-K. Untuchinkum? No, <laughs> I can't even do it. What the hell? I suck at reading. So recently, if you guys have been watching my channel, and if you haven't, I'd, I'd suggest to go check it out because it was crazy. I read Toy Cemetery and did a reading vlog, and that was by William W. Johnstone. This is another Johnstone title, but one that I don't really plan on reading. I just want to collect Johnstone, even though he is batshit crazy. That is why I want to collect him. I wouldn't say he's got my favorite writing style, because I feel like his writing's really choppy, but I did enjoy Toy Cemetery, and it strange and twisted way and also in a I don't know compulsive way you know in a sense because I just wanted to find out what would happen so I kept turning and turning this one was published by Zebra and you know the cover is very simple there's not much flair here but I do like the colors specifically here is Eternal Bliss by Christopher Fahey and this is another cover that was done by Gerber. It is signed. I will show you after I show you the spine, which is, of course, beat up, like most of my copies, but I'm okay with it. The back, you could see the art a lot better because there is no reflection. The cover itself has some reflective elements, which I think is kind of neat, actually, so I don't mind the reflectiveness of it. Really cool looking. And it's signed by Gerber, as I said, right here. So here we have Winter Horror. It's set in winter time. Very cold looking cover with all the blues and whites. Not the most perfect condition. That's okay. This is The Island by T.M. Wright. Published by Tor, as you can see on the spine there. Just some words on the back. And this was published in 1988. Later 80s. I've got two editions of this next one. So this is The Possession of Jessica Young. And this one's the later edition. There's not much flair there, but I do like the colors. So let's look at the later edition here. This is by Russ Martin. Both published by Tor. And I do think this cover is a little more menacing. If she's supposed to be possessed, I'm guessing the guy behind her is the demon or spirit or whatever. And here, she just, I don't know, she looks like a housewife being held by her husband. She doesn't look possessed at all there. 
she was just like, hello, whatever. Hi. And the guy's like, hey, I'm behind the mist. I don't think this one's very convincing. But I just, I saw them both at the bookstore. They were both cheap. I said, why not? It'd be cool to have these two different editions. Even though I know, I think uh, Will Erickson on his blog, he shit on both of these covers. He's like, they're not that great. I uh, read that he, he didn't like either of these. But I don't mind adding them to the old collection. The black and green one's from 1982. The kind of pinkish one is from 1988. Now we're going to get into these next few, which are kind of evil kids, evil creepy babies, you know, type of theme. So that's what the next few are going to be about. This one is Unholy Child. Rough shape. Faded. Signet. This next one, Fertility Rights, I haven't seen anyone really talk about. It's not even classified as pure horror. It is published by Zebra. And the only reason I picked it up was because there is a little blood right there on the wheel of this carriage. And the baby's like, yo, I got your stethoscope. I don't know, is he an evil baby? I'm not sure. Not too bad, just one spine crease. And there is blood dripping from the stethoscope itself, too. This one's by Faye and Zachary. Moving on with more baby-themed horror, I guess. I don't know if the babies are evil or if it's just about babies and evil entities surrounding babies. I'm not sure. But either way, I love this cover. I really dig it. I think the colors are wonderful. Pinkish purple. And look at that reflective font for the title. The Crib by Paul Kent, published by Bantam in 1987. There's the spine. Not good. And the back. How the children died was a surprise. When they died was a shock. Why they died was sheer terror. Yeah. I'm not trying to make fun of these. I do like reading some, even though these are the ones I'm not going to read. Moving on with more child and baby themed horror we can see a little clawed hand reaching out from this crib and we see a green glow as well what is the baby radioactive or something i don't know but i do enjoy the vivid colors again just like the crib this one has a very vivid vivid cover which i quite like this is by leisure and it's Written by Mort Castle, who also wrote The Strangers, which I'm going to show. I guess that's a spoiler. I'm going to show it soon, like in a minute or two. But yes, I'm actually going to read that one. I won't be reading Curse the Child, I don't think. Again, Evil Kids, Seed of Evil, by Edmund Plant. Or Plante, I don't know. I know I've probably heard it, but and somehow I still don't know how to pronounce it. Leisure. Again, the back is just text. There's actually plenty of covers that copy this exact art style where there's a kid laying in a coffin. There's at least one other book, but it has a red coffin lining. I can't remember the name of it, though. I saw Leon again. Not to keep name dropping Leon, but I have been watching his videos so much and it like zens me out. It also gets me addicted to buying more. I watch, 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 and then I'm like, oh, I should search for that title and get it. And I have been. Whatever. It's terrible. Uh, but some of these actually I picked up before I saw Leon talk about it. So that was kind of cool. I would pick it up and I feel like he's talked about everything ever. He's probably found all kinds of good stuff and it'd be hard to find something that he hasn't already found. All right, so this is the Sendai, more creepy kids, or just horror about kids and babies. This one's about infant deaths and test tube babies. So we can see, very strange build of a child. Very, I don't know, it's a strange silhouette. It doesn't seem like his arms are the right size. Like. I kept looking at this, I'm like, something's wrong with this. So maybe that is on purpose because that is part of why he's evil? Like a disproportionate baby? I don't know. The arms are very tiny. It looks like a T-Rex baby. I'm not really sure what's going on there, but I kept looking at it. I'm like, something's off about this silhouette. I, I don't know. I can't put my finger on it. I think it's the length of the arms or maybe the legs are too long. I, it's strange. This one's by William Woolfolk. Moving along, here we have another... Creepy looking kid on a cover, but she's a slightly older kid. This one's called Mind to Kill by David St. Clair. And 
What gives away that she's evil are the red eyes, right? Look at those red eyes. I'm gonna get ya. Next up, we've got a medical-themed horror story, and it's actually a collection of stories. It's called Intensive Scare. Get it? Like, intensive care? I don't know. I'm easily amused. This was published by Daw and edited by Carl Edward Wagner. Look at the back here. There's more. Rough copy. I wouldn't mind reading this. So it's a collection of stories, all medical-themed. I don't know. I think it's pretty great. Intensive scare. When horror makes a house call. Another possession-themed book. Possession! Again, this is kind of a cheesy cover, but at the same time, somehow I do like it. So although it is cheesy looking, it kind of reminds me of a romance novel, which I would never read, but I, uh, I like Possession, so I was like, oh, I'm gonna get it. And the roses, I think, they're embossed and they feel really cool, and it just has a neat look, even though it's still got that cheese, too. This is by Peter James. But here is one I'm definitely going to read, Cat Magic. Seems amazing, Witches. This is by Whitley Stryber, and hopefully I'm saying that right. I know I've heard people say it, because actually a lot of people have said they want to read this, or have read it. A lot of other booktubers and people on YouTube in general. And I actually also looked at the Goodreads reviews. This is published by Tor, as you can see on the spine here. Nothing much on the back, just text. But God do I dig this cover. The green, the cat, kind of clawing over this whole little town. And as you can see, there's like a church steeple in the middle there. Moving from one that I definitely want to read to one that I'm definitely not going to read. I heard it was crap. Oblisk, Oblisk whatever. And again, it's rough, but as soon as I opened it, saw the step back art. Hell yeah. I was like, I must have it. It looks a lot like Totem in the way it's designed. There's another book called Totem. I think it was either Grady Hendrix who said it was bad or somebody, and it's got terrible reviews as well. Everyone wishes that the inside was as good as the amazing cover art, but that's really nothing new when you talk about paperback horror. A lot of times the covers kind of shine more than the actual writing. And that's a shame, but it is what it is. It was a big fad back in the 70s and 80s. As you guys who are fellow book lovers and probably fellow paperback from hell lovers, you probably already know. Not too far from being done. This next stack are ones that I definitely want to read. So all of these that I'm about to show you are reading copies. Although some of them are kind of nice, so I'll have to try to you know, protect them as I read. Here we've got a nice 70s edition of the Stepford Wives. Just look at that old school 70s type of art. I have another one from the 70s here, and that is The Little Girl Who Lives Down the Lane. This guy looks like an opera guy. I definitely want to read this. Heard good things. Actually heard great things. That's published by Bantam. And here is a nice little Edgar Allan Poe collection, Eight Tales of Terror. Just love that haunted mansion. Very eerie looking mansion. This one I am super pumped about. This is The Thief of Always by Clive Barker. And I do love Clive Barker as an author. The Hellbound Heart is one of my favorite books. It's more of a novella. I love that story. And Hellraiser is my favorite horror movie of all time, period. It's number one. I have a whole list of, you know, favorites, but that is definitely, I always say that's my number one. If someone asks me, what's your favorite horror movie? I always answer that without fail. So I was super happy to pick up this old school edition of The Thief of Always. There are better editions out there, but it, this one really beats the one that I had I haven't read it yet, but the edition I picked up a couple of years ago is from like the 2000s. I can't remember the exact year, but it's really boring. It's yellow and black. It's super plain looking on the cover. But I do like also that my edition that's newer doesn't have this. These awesome inner illustrations. So that was worth it alone. Plus it was super cheap. So I'm going to try to find another one here. And this one... The coolest part about the cover is who did the cover art, and that is Kirk Reinert. And although I don't like this one as much as the one I'm about to tell you about, I still like this a lot. So Kirk Reinert is the cover artist not only for the Hellbound Heart, which, like I just said, Clive Barker also wrote, but also he did the art for this book called Stallion. That cover is my favorite Pairbacks from Hell cover that I own. 
and I own over 200 now. Actually, how I know how many I own is because I started to do like an inventory list on Google Sheets of all the ones I have. And yeah, it's about 240 something. With my book mail today, it might be over 250. So Stallion is absolutely my favorite. I mean, I keep waiting for like another cover to blow it away, but oh my god, it's so wonderful. So I have this footage here from a previous book haul I'll show you that is me showing off the cover. I freaking love this cover freaking love it. And when I found it, and I found it in the bookstore, I didn't know what I had found. I, all I knew was that the cover was freaking badass. I looked at it, it blew me away, as I said. It actually is in perfect condition. It's one of the few Parabacks from Hell books that I own that is in decent condition. The spine is flawless. The cover, really, really nice looking. I mean, it's not like new, but it's almost like new. I would say it's very good condition. So I was lucky to find that. I didn't even, like, know about it. I just saw it on the shelf, and I was like, oh my god, I gotta have it. Freaking skeleton horse. Oh, amazing. Anyway, I do want to read this very much. And although the cover isn't as badass and amazing and freaking mind-blowing as Stallion, I still like this cover. My friend Kat actually has a hardcover edition of The Thief of Always, and I'm kind of jelly of it because it's very nice. So this is a gargoyle on the back. That's pretty cool. And I just heard great things about this. I might read this around Christmas time because it does take place around then. So this should be fun. And apparently kids can enjoy this book as well as adults. So it's a different kind of Clive Barker novel, that's for sure. Because most of his stories, you can't just let kids read it. So yeah. <laughs> Here is another weird pickup that I found at the bookstore. And it's actually in pretty good condition, but there are some spine creases. Everything I find at this bookstore has spine creases. That's okay. This is The List of Seven by Mark Frost, and it's part of a duology. The coolest part about this, and I didn't know, I did a little research about it. But before I tell you the cool little tidbits I found out, let me first show you the inner artwork here. And this might give you, I guess, some insight into why I picked it up. So, although everything about this scream that, screams that it's not horror when you look at it from this angle, when you open it up, though, there are some elements like this mummy, this really creepy creature. And here, I want to specifically point out, there's a guy who looks like his eyes have been sewn shut. Another guy with scars cut into his face with red eyes. So lots of horrific looking elements, but it also has Sherlock Holmes feels. And maybe that's because the main character is Arthur Conan Doyle. Yes, yeah, so it's got like real life people written in as characters in this book. So that's one cool little tidbit. But another tidbit that I didn't know until I started to kind of read the inside cover the author, Mark Frost, is one of the co-creators of the show Twin Peaks. And I'm a huge fan of Twin Peaks. So is my friend Nathan, aka Nathaniel Toll, who wrote Pumpkin Cinema. He loves Twin Peaks. In fact, he visited, like, some of the sites from the actual show. So yeah, Mark Frost helped create Twin Peaks! That's... Uh, a plus in my book. That is, like, a brownie points in my book. I'm like, hell yeah! And in fact... I did look it up online and found that out, but I think there's also a blurb in the book that that actually mentions that, too. Yeah, here we go. Okay, I found the blurb. It's from Buffalo News. Dark Brooding, a heart-thumping bizarre tale. Mark Frost, co-creator of Twin Peaks, brings to his novel the weirdness of that marvelously deranged TV series. I'm sold. So I'm definitely going to read it, even though it does have more of like a mystery vibe. I don't care. I definitely think there's going to be horror elements, and that's good enough for me. Very unique, and I've seen nobody talk about this. It's published by Avon, and let me see the year because I don't remember. I probably have it written on my notes, but I can't see my notes very well. All right, it was printed in 1990 originally, and this version was published in 1994. All right, this is a super, super rough copy. And after I bought it, of course, I saw Leon talk about this, and his copy was rough too, so it doesn't make me feel so bad. This is The Keepsake by Paul Husson, and the cool thing is I got it because I saw the back mentioned Ireland. So this book, and the one that I'm going to show you, I'm just going to show it to you now, Cast a Cold Eye by Alan Ryan, that one is also got Irish elements. So both of these books kind of have an Irish theme. And I like that because I did actually visit Dublin, Ireland 
couple of years ago. It was amazing. I went to the Guinness factory and actually got to sip some Guinness actually there in Ireland. How cool was that? It was awesome. Uh, I really had a great time there. Amazing place. But yeah, these seemed like a lot of fun. And in fact, I've heard great things specifically about Cast a Cold Eye. And Alan Ryan has written some other things like Dead White. It even says here, author of Dead White. But I've heard that this is way better than Dead White because some people were disappointed by that story. So this one apparently is a lot better. And I've actually even heard Will Erickson, I say heard, it's really more I've read that Will Erickson off of his blog, that he actually likes this book too. So I'm going to definitely read this one as well. This one though is more about like an Irish stone. So it says, It was only a souvenir of Ireland, a small stone that bore, if you looked very closely, the suggestion of a human face. She couldn't know that the only power of St. Patrick had kept its evil in check through the centuries, that in her own home, when the lights were out, it could become a gateway for an unimaginable malevolence with a thirst for blood and for her unborn child. So yeah, the keepsake seems awesome too. So that's more of like an Irish stone that kind of, I guess, is a portal to bad things, whereas this is a little bit different. So here we have two books published by Leisure, both written by John Tiggs, as you can see, Hands of Lucifer and Evil Dreams. I wouldn't mind reading either, but they're not really a super big priority or anything like that. But both seem interesting, and I really love the cover of each. I feel like both are quite different, but still effective. This one's super understated, a little subtle. You see a skeleton shape in the base of a tree. Whereas this one's more in your face, you could see like a demonic creature, some evil hands, and some flames, I guess, from hell. Obviously, it is called The Hands of Lucifer. Are those Lucifer's hands the Lucifer? I guess I'll have to read it to find out. For some reason, this book is one of the books that I want to read the most out of this entire haul here. And I think it's because the premise on the back really captured me, along with this striking bluish cover with the huge moon, which is very eye-catching. So the back says, Coulson, Kansas. Such a nice town. Everyone was friendly there, the police, the neighbors, even the undertaker. But something festered beneath the sunny surface and the good old-fashioned hospitality, a wickedness that knew no bounds, an evil that threatened the living with grave danger. Colson certainly was a good place to live, but it was a horrible place to die. Before long, the little community was overflowing with corpses and unexplained deaths. If no one could stop the shocking wave of murders, the local mortician would be busy, the cemetery would be full, and a season of murder and mayhem would reign beneath the moons of summer. There's only one moon on the cover, though. Where are the multiple moons? I'd like to know. Anyway, that's just stupid. Whatever, I'm being silly. This is also published by Leisure, like the last two I showed you. All right, we mentioned Mort Castle earlier when we talked about, I think it was called Curse the Child, you know, baby-themed horror, evil child horror, whatever you want to call it. This one, very different, it's called The Strangers, and I for sure want to read this one, although I didn't want to touch Curse the Child. Don't think it's something that I'm going to be too, you know, eager to dive into. This one, however, very eager to dive into, and a lot of people know about this already, so I'm not going to read the premise. Look at that cover, pretty flippin' neat. And I found this in the bookstore. 99% of these I'm showing you I found in the bookstore. If I don't say it's from Etsy, then it was from the bookstore. This is also published by Leisure. So in my last haul, if you guys were with me, and if you weren't, I'll link the haul up here because there were some great finds in it. I talked about how much I loved covers with bandaged faces on them. I feel like they're very extra creepy, and they remind me of a movie called Goodnight Mommy, which a big part of the story are these kids having to relate to their mom who has a bandaged up face. And they start to wonder if it's really their mother anymore. Like, is it really her or has a stranger came back in her place type of thing? And a lot of different things happen. So that's the basic plot. I'm not giving away any spoilers at all. Lots of crazy things happen. It's a foreign film. Check it out if you want. So this, just like the last book I showed in my haul, which was this one, Face Maker by William Katz, I said I love the bandaged face and it reminded me of Goodnight Mommy, that movie. But this one, I think even more so reminds me of that movie. And it's actually even a better cover, I think. I think it's a better bandaged face cover. This is Dearest by Peter 
Loran. And I actually think that the premise sounds quite good. I might actually read this. So once again, before I move on, the two covers side by side. Bandage face covers. Yeah. Under wraps. Like the Disney Channel original movie, which I've already mentioned in a previous video. It just tells you how much I freaking like Under Wraps. But yes, Under Wraps, which is about a mummy. All right, here's another book by Rick Hatula. I showed one earlier called Little Brothers, but this one's called Moonwalker, and it's kind of got a zombie theme. Covers super rough, lots of creases. But if you look real close, which I'll zoom in here, there's a face there in the tree. This kind of has a zombie theme. It's got like a zombie feel I've read when I researched it. It's published by Zebra, and the back says... The people of Dyer liked their quaint little farming community just the way it was, so they didn't question the bizarre, unexplained disappearances that had begun to plague their town. No one talked about the hideous screams that shattered their sleep, nor asked why the lights of the funeral parlor blazed long into the night. And they never, never discussed the eerie figures seen harvesting the potato fields by day. The slow, lumbering hulks with expressionless features and a blood-curdling deadness behind their eyes. Engineer Dale Harmon was unaware of the unspeakable evil that infested the sleepy New England village, but now Harmon and four others are about to face an unstoppable onslaught of bloody terror that will far surpass their most gruesome nightmares, for the siege is about to begin, and the army of the dead take no prisoners. Moonwalker. Amazing! That's all I have to say. Amazing. I've been collecting a few of Bernard Taylor's books after I read The Reaping, and I found this one at the bookstore, so I said, might as well pick it up! Charmed Life is what it is called, published by BMI, and I've heard mixed things about this when I researched it. I wouldn't mind reading it, not a priority per se. Actually, one of my favorite booktubers, Alex, the Bookubus, who I will link her channel down below, she actually read this and reviewed it quite positively. So that makes me want to read it a little bit more than I would have wanted to originally. So I might check this out eventually. Just, um, it'll take some time to get there. I have so much to read. Book lovers, you can relate. All right, this one, I don't know, it's a mix between subtle and in-your-face creepy. No pun intended because it's a face in your face. Look at that really clear crystal clear, actually, blue eye, just staring at you. And the title's very strange, the way it's worded. When We Dead Awaken by John R. Holt. I just think the cover's so effective. And something is stretched over his face, some kind of material. I don't know if it's like a ghostly material or actual material, like plastic or something. But this one sounds intriguing too, and I may read it one day. I don't know. I'm going to get you, Jack. Don't know how, don't know when. Going to make you pay. That's some of the blue font. Some of the description on the back. All right, another cover that really floats my boot. We've got Crawling Dark by Pauline Dunn. And man, I saw Leon show this after I found it, of course. And... He had a way better copy than me. Look at that creepy, I guess you could say it's a moon. This looks very wintry, so I do want to read it, but I will probably read it in the winter time. So either this winter, next winter, I'm kind of already booked up a lot with my reading plans. Look at these arms just jutting out from the snow. Wonderful. Swarm of terror. Someone or something had taken the inhabitants of the little town by surprise, killing them instantly at their jobs, in their beds, in front of their televisions. But why? As Sandra and Martin cross an eerie wasteland of blood and mayhem, they discover that the dead of Rockville aren't exactly dead. They're crawling with an evil of unknown origin. And when they hatch, they'll be hell to pay! Man, that sounds amazing. Uh... I'm so into that idea of the story. So I promised you guys my very final book haul reveal would be the biggest gem that I found. So I'm going to show this and then I'll show the quickly, because I know this is long, I will quickly show the few that I got in the mail today. But first, the gem I promised. All right, so this is super hard to find in the wild, but I found it. And here's a cool story. So I go into the bookstore and the whole reason I went, I had planned to not go back for like a month or two. 
because I was going to go to an out-of-town bookstore, so I wasn't going to go to my local store. But I actually befriended the amazing lady who works at the bookstore. Her name is Cookie, and I've talked about her before. She has an amazing life. She's super cool and just very friendly, very sweet. Speaking of sweet, this was so very random, but also very sweet. She had texted me, because we exchanged numbers, and said, Please come into the shop. My boyfriend works at P.F. Chang's, and I want to cook you a feast. Please come and pick it up. Tell me what day you can come. So I said, okay, I'll come on Tuesday. So I go over there to pick up the P.F. Chang's. I told myself, you are not going to buy a thing. Because you're going to go to an out-of-town bookstore. There's no reason to buy stuff. I get in there. I, you know, see her say hi. I even tell her, like, maybe I'll just, like, look at the shelf real quick. The first thing I see is this book. And I've got footage of this. So, I, here it is. This is The Cipher by Kathy Koja. And yes, it is super rare to find this in the wild. Not the best condition. She, like, there's a snipped cover and it's, like, colored here to make it seem like it's not snipped. Whatever. I don't care. It's super hard to find this. It's going for, like, a ton of money online all the time. And I wanted to read it. And I still want to read it because I haven't read it yet. But uh, I can't wait to get to this eventually. I can't believe it was there. Anyway, so I've got this footage, like, which I referred to a second ago. I will play it here. This is me discovering the freaking book on the shelf. Enjoy. So, although I said no book buying, no looking, once I saw freaking the cipher on the shelf. I said, well, I may as well look. I go there with the expectation to not buy anything, come home with 40 books, but man, and this kind of started the snowball effect and kind of got me going, but what a great find. I mean, come on. And I gotta say, so to kind of summarize, I actually have enough books to do like two other book hauls between the out-of-town bookstore and this second trip, which was not this haul. So yeah, I've got like at least two or three more whole hauls I could do for you guys coming up soon. So let's just take a look at the inner artwork here. Pretty damn cool! There's the lighting. Okay, that's better. I can't believe I found it. It's a, it's a freaking true life treasure that you find out in the wild like i can't even believe it freaking treasure <sighs> hopefully i'll continue to find more and that won't be my last one i will say the gilgul is another one that i found in freaking perfect condition at the bookstore and i never find stuff at that bookstore in perfect condition but the gilgul was one that i showed in a previous haul that was in like perfect condition and i could not believe it i was like oh my god and usually she puts stickers on the fronts of the ones that are the best ones and they're held to get off and even with, like, I've tried Bestine and I've tried Goo Gone, either one sometimes can damage it. So you got to be really careful. I have damaged, like, three or four covers. Luckily, most of the time, they're just reading copies anyway. But luckily, the Cypher and the Gilgul did not have stickers like this woman. Now, Cookie doesn't own the bookstore. She just works there. So I'm not talking about Cookie. The woman who owns the place is the one who puts the stickers on, and it frustrates me to no end. Putting the stickers right on the middle of the cover and, like, the best parts makes me so mad. But anyway, that's a story for another day. We've got plenty more book hauls to come. All right, and finally, let's end with some book mail, which is also a lot of vintage horror. So here we go. This will be it after this. A few titles more. As I told you guys, I don't like to do a lot of online shopping, but I've been kind of doing it anyway. Even though I don't like to, I'm freaking addicted. I've got a problem. I've got a real, real problem. So a book I picked up strictly to read. I know it's super rough. It's The Rats by James Herbert. And I loved the book The Nest so much, which is another, like, creature, animal attack type of book. Love that subject genre I've discovered recently that it's kind of like one of my biggest I don't know obsessions when it comes to old school horror I actually recently read The Rue by Alan Baxter which is a more new school but it's written like it's old school type of animal attack book obviously about a killer kangaroo hence the name The Rue oh my god it was amazing I loved it but I got more to say that in my upcoming video which will be my April and May reading wrap-up so you'll find out about everything I thought about that. It was wonderful. But yes, I'm a big fan of these whole animal attack books, and so I had to pick up really the quintessential animal attack book, The Rats. You could argue Jaws is another one, but I've already read Jaws. So I had to get the one that I hadn't read. It's like, it's basically the three huge ones, in my opinion, are The Nest, The Rats, and Jaws. And there's only one now that I haven't read. I had to get it to read it. Wasn't that expensive, so I was like, what the heck? And now we've got a book that actually was recommended to me by someone on my YouTube channel in the comments. 
his name is Elijah, and he recommended Wind Chimes. He said, I think you might like it. I think he commented that on my Toy Cemetery reading blog. And this was so coincidental. I wasn't going looking for this. One of the shops I follow on Etsy had this listed for a decent price. I already have bought from this shop, so I said, why not? I just like heard about this book. Someone literally just recommended it to me. So I am going to read this eventually. This is Wind Chimes by R.R. R. Walters. And there's an evil looking kid on the cover. Again, the, the reason you think they're evil is because they have colored eyes. This one has yellow eyes, whereas other kids sometimes have you know, red eyes. But this one definitely doesn't look normal, I would say. And she's sitting under a tree. And of course, we've got some wind chimes, hence the name wind chimes. And this was published by Zebra. So I'm looking forward to reading that and letting Elijah know what I think about it. Thank you for recommending it. And finally, a book I found out about from Leon, the paperback maniac. You could uh, also check out his channel. Like I said, I've been plugging him the whole freaking stream. Uh, his channel is called Paperback Mania. And he showed this on a haul, the sibling. I loved just the idea of it. Once he showed the inner artwork, I looked it up and looked up the description and I had to get it. It's actually got a Christmas vibe and I'm going to read it around Christmas time. Look at that awesome inner artwork. This was actually pretty affordable on Etsy. So I think it was Etsy or eBay. I can't remember. I picked it up and I said, since I just saw Leon talk about it, why not snag it? And it'd be perfect for Christmas. If you look it up on Goodreads, it actually says that it has to do with Halloween, but I actually read Grady Hendrix's Goodreads review, which does mention Christmas. Heck, the inside cover mentions Christmas, so I believe it's more Christmas and that Goodreads is wrong. This is The Sibling, once again, and is written by Adam Hall, and it is released by Playboy Press. That's who published it. So... I have a few titles by Playboy Press, so it was cool to add another one to the collection. And that's it. We thought we'd never get to the end, but here we are at the end right now. Thanks, guys, for sticking with me. I know it's been a long video. I've got plenty of great things to come, both 90s and horror-related. Coming up soon, I'm going to have, like I teased a little bit ago, my April and May reading wrap-up, which will include a little bit of my June TBR list and also maybe even some books from my July to-be-read list. We will see once I make the video if I will include July or not. I probably will because I've got some of my reading, you know, scheduled out and planned. We'll see. Really excited about that. Hope you'll check that out. That should come shortly after this video. And also I have another zombie chat and this is going to be about zombie horror movies and that's going to be with my friend Kat who we do all kinds of horror movie marathons together and we talk about the movies we watched for the marathons. Then Shortly after that, I'm going to have a awesome look back on Disney's The Hunchback of Notre Dame. And the reason is because June 19th marks the 25th anniversary of the world premiere. And I actually went to the world premiere because it was in New Orleans at the Superdome. I have very vivid memories of going to see The Hunchback. And it's super dark for a Disney film. It's very, got got some very, really dark stuff. I mean, of course, the novel, it's it's dark. I haven't read it, but I know about the novel. It, it does change things from the novel. Like, Disney movies tend to change things. Like, no matter what Disney movie you're looking at, it's going to end up changing things from their original story. It is what it is. Movies do that all the time. It's not just Disney who's guilty of that. So... I love that movie, though. And, you know, it's not everyone's favorite, but I think it's worth talking about, so I will review it. I will talk about my experience way back in 1996 from when I went to the world premiere. I hope I could find I have a button from the actual premiere that I still have somewhere. I saw it, like, a year ago, but now I can't find it. So I'm going to look more for that button. But, yeah, look out for that. I think I'm going to release it the day after June 19th. So I think June 20th is a Sunday. So I think I'm going to release it then. And it'll be fun to just look at it, uh, talk about some Disney stuff. And then I've got plenty more content in the works as well, including more book reviews and just more book content. Plus, I've got a lot of shark content coming soon. I'll be doing a shark movie marathon with my friend. I mentioned him earlier, Nathaniel Toll. Pick up his book, Pumpkin Cinema. It's amazing. If you love horror and Halloween time, he tells you the best movies to watch around Halloween. But anyway, look out for that shark marathon chat with me and Nathan. It'll be up on my YouTube eventually. I think we're going to do the chat in August. I'm also doing a slasher, like a summer slasher movie marathon with my friend Kat. So I'll have content surrounding that in basically July and August as well. So lots of stuff in the works, horror related, not only movies, but also horror fiction related, and some Disney stuff and some random 90s stuff thrown in too. So hopefully you'll stick with me, sub, hit that bell so you never miss a video, and thanks guys so much.
Oh, and please comment below before I go. Please comment below. That helps so much if you do comment. What was your favorite book from this haul? And not only what your favorite book was, but have you read any of these books that I showed? I would love to know your opinions if you have read any of them because I need to know so I could base what I'm going to read off of other opinions. Even though I do like the judgment for myself, it doesn't hurt to read other opinions as well, which I love to do. So thanks again, guys. Now I'm really leaving for real this time. Till next time, keep on killing it. See ya.